Hello, how are you? Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is the second lecture. Uh, we're going to start uh, history of Western philosophy and theology. And last week, uh, Sunday, we tried to start Ionia philosophies, uh, but we couldn't start because uh, uh, because of time limits. Um, before we start uh, Ionia philosophers, I like to ask a few questions. Um, what is the three branches of uh, philosophies? The first one is uh, ontology or metaphysics, right? Uh, what is the uh, ontology, the meaning of ontology? Study of being, right? Uh, what is the second one? Uh, Estomologies. Estomologies. What is the meaning of it? Uh, study of knowledge, right? Uh, third one is axiology. Axiology is uh, study of ethics or value theory. Value theory, yes. Now I want to ask you one more thing. Uh, do we have a philosophy in the Bible? Yes, yes right? Yes. Especially uh, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. That means who is God <laughs> and who is a human being, right? That teaches us that there is a philosophy in the Bible. But uh, uh, I think uh, uh, theologians didn't develop into uh, philosophy uh, Christian uh, philosophy, so that we didn't talk about it yet, but there is a philosophy in, in the Bible. Uh, which one is the superior, Bible or philosophy? <laughs> of course, uh, Bible is superior than philosophy, right? Why? Because all the knowledge is in the Bible, uh, Paul said. So now I'm, uh, let's go to uh, Ionia philosophy. Um, we talk about a little bit about Ionia philosophers. Uh, Ionia philosophy we call corporal monists or corporal monism. Uh, corporal means uh, material, right? Material. Monism or monist. Monism means one. So the Ionia philosophers believe that everything reduced to the prime essence, right? So, you know, everything came from one prime es essence. Uh, in other words, uh, you know, small material things uh, uh, become the whole world, right? And uh, we, first, uh, let's go to, um, um, tell us, um, okay. Um, they less believe that everything comes from what? Water. Okay. Everything comes from water. So uh, his thinking is like this. Okay. Uh, now, think, think about it. Why the water is uh, essential uh, for life? Let you think about it. If we don't have uh, enough water to drink, what happens to our body? No, if we don't drink enough water, what happens? Dehydrated. If you continue to do not drink, what happens? Oh, uh, you, you die, right? Mm -hmm. So he think that without the water, there is no life. That's why he think everything came from water. Uh, so uh, uh, also the water have three uh, forms, right? Liquids, water uh, become a liquid, right? And sometimes this water become winter, winter time water become solid. And uh, also water become gas, right? When you heat it up and uh, become 212 uh, Celsius, it become evaporate, right? So it become a gas, right? Anyway, 
uh, tell us to believe that uh, everything came from water. But his students, Al, uh, Anaximander, teacher, that's not true, he said. <laughs> everything come from, he said <laughs> very funny things. Little one, he didn't say what is a little one, but boundless, very little one. And uh, so uh, uh, he is the first evolutionist. He believed that you know, little one can be uh, amoeba or smaller than amoeba. So all life came from that small things. So we believe that Anaximander would be uh, first uh, evolutionist, okay? Anaximander, his friend said, no, fundamental stuff is not a, a little one or boundless, but he said air. Uh, same same uh, you know, idea, you know, if we don't have air, what happened to human being? We cannot survive, right? So he believed that everything came from uh, air. Uh, trouble is this one. <laughs> Uh, Heraclitus. You know, three people, uh, Dallas, uh, Anaximander, Anaximenes, Menes, uh, they are from uh, Melitus, small island of Melitus. So uh, actually philosophy starts from Melitus now, but uh, Heraclitus is not from Melitus, he's from um, Ephesus. A lot of people call him a uh, weeping philosopher <laughs> because you know uh, he thought about it life. He's so sorrowful, so he, he cried so much. So they called the weeping philosopher. He said a uh, fundamental thing is fire. Okay. Now the later on, uh Plato took his idea and made uh, earthbound ideas, right? He said, he, his most famous uh, contribution is everything's always a flux. Think about it, everything is uh, flux means moving, right? He said, only one thing you cannot depend on is there is nothing you can depend on. <laughs> Uh, he says everything always change, right? Uh, example is uh, he said uh, one, uh, when you walk into the uh, uh, stream, uh, you step on, but 10 minutes, uh, 10 seconds later, do you have the same water you pass through your uh, legs? It's not, right? Water is flowing. So he said, Everything changes. Life is changes. Think about it. You take your watch and uh, count uh, 10 seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So 10 minutes before and now is the same? Not really, right? You are 10 seconds older, right? You are 10 seconds older. So he think that everything changes. So later on, Plato took his idea and made earthbound uh, world. The world is changing, he said. So it's, uh, you know, later we'll talk about uh, Plato. Uh, when we talk about Plato, we talk about uh, Heraclitus idea, how he took uh, his idea and made earthbound things. Now, when we think about it, when we live in this world, nothing is same. Yesterday and today is not same, different. Well, if we think about yesterday and today, it seems like the same thing, but if we extend it 10 years ago and 10 years now, are you same? No, right, really, right? The whole world is changing, changing idea. So this one is coming into two things in uh, Christianity that 
The world is changing. This idea, his idea came into actually uh, early uh, uh, our church fathers and uh, uh, used so much on uh, his idea, okay? Anyway, so uh, there are uh, four people I was uh, talking about. Another, uh, Helacritus was an uh, important man is, he was the first person to talk about logos. Anyway, I, I wrote down, uh, it says, right? <laughs> it says, uh, logos, which is the does always on comprehending our humans, both before they have uh, heard it and when they first heard it. I don't know what that means, <laughs> but he said, logos is uh, uh, on uh, comprehending our humans. Very difficult. Um, now later, uh, John took uh, logos as uh, Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. In uh, John's gospel, in the beginning, uh, there was uh, logos. Logos was with God. Logos, uh, logos is uh, God, right? Something like that. But actually, original logos idea come from Heraclitus, but. Uh, Actually, we don't uh, comprehend what you were talking about. Anyway, how can we interpret the logos? Uh, it can be ordering principle of a cosmos or divining orders of a cosmos. <laughs> it can mean, uh, it can mean uh, human region or product of human regions. So logos is not very difficult to understand. Uh, to under, understand and receive it, right? I have a small letter there. Uh, he who hears not me, but Logos will say, all is one. So he, what he says in uh, one sentence that Logos sounds like a God, right? He who hears me, uh, hears not me, but Logos will say. <laughs> so I think uh, uh, Christianity uh, took that idea. It's something like, uh, um, you know, in Korean word, koshigi. <laughs> logos was the idea of koshigi. <laughs> when they say koshigi, they understood what they talk about. Logos is something like that, right? So anyway, Heraclitus, the first person who took uh, word logos. Okay. Now, uh, so Ionia philosophy is, uh, we can say corporal monist, monism, right? They believe uh, there's four things. The first one is naturalism. Naturalism does not mean uh, natural lover, okay? Uh, uh, you know, uh, let you think about the natural, uh, uh, naturalist. When we think about naturalist, what do you uh, 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 say about naturalist? Maybe they are natural lovers, right? They love the naturalist. But uh, in philosophy, especially mono, uh, uh, monoist, union of philosophers, natural, uh, naturalism is not like that, right? So, so things happen natural force. There is no supernatural things, right? They only believe a uh, natural phenomena, okay? So natural is a set over anything. Actually, they are, uh, you know, only believing nat uh, natural things, they are atheist. So we know that they are atheist, okay? Second day was talking about the materialism, right? Everything come from material, material. Here, material, uh, not necessary material things, but uh, they believe that uh, this world is only exist material, material things. But that's not true, right? There is a spiritual, there is a God, right? And Paul said in uh, Romans, what he says, there is visual and individual things, right? God revealed uh, visual, uh, God revealed himself in, in, in 
uh, visual things and individual things, right? But they don't believe uh, spiritual things, individual things. So they, we call the material. This idea is very important later on uh, in philosophy. So they are like uh, more like uh, that idea is more like a theory of uh, revolution. And uh, uh, third one is monism. Monism we already talked about. Everything that can be reduced to one common substance. In other words, everything reduced to the one as premier essence, right? So um, Thelius said everything came from water, right? So something like that. Um, high holism. They believe that water is uh, moving. Water is everything they think, right? But uh, when we, you see, when you go to the lake or you go to the uh, ocean, the water is moving, right? Why it moves? There is many things, right? Uh, water itself cannot be moved. But Ionia philosophers believe that water is <laughs> moving by itself. <laughs> water moves by wind or also because of the moon, right? Right? Yeah. But uh, they didn't believe that. And so they, they called the um, uh, uh, kiloism, right? Anyway, they, this is what they believed, okay? Now, let's go to, uh, uh, okay, Italian philosophers. We already talked about uh, uh, Italian philosophers as not necessary means philosophy from Italy, right? Greek people moved to the Italy, right? They, they, that's what we called uh, Italian philosophers. They call incorporeal monists. We already know the uh, monist means, right? Uh, monism is uh, everything came from one element. Uh, Italian philosophers also believe that everything comes from one, but it's not Corporal, but incorporal. Incorporal means uh, spiritual. Uh, corporal means material. Incorporal means uh, spiritual. So Italian philosophers were spiritual <laughs> people because everything come from spiritual things. One spiritual things, right? Okay. Anyway, um, there are four people I want to mention. Okay. First of all, uh, Pythagoras, uh, second one is uh, Phenom uh, Phones, uh, third one is uh, uh, Paul Medinis, and uh, last one is Geno. Geno here is different from Geno in, uh, in the Bible, in the uh, Book of Acts. There is two philosophers, right? Philo philosophies, right? Do you remember the uh, Book of Acts you study? There is two kind of philosophies. One is Epicurus and another one is Stoic, right? So, uh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> She's a philosopher's wife. <laughs> That's right. Geno, Geno is, uh, um, you know, Epicurus. He created Epicurus, but that Geno and this Geno is different, okay? So let's think about uh, first uh, Italian philosophers, uh, Pythagorean. When you think of, when we uh, say about Pythagorean, what do you remember? Theory. Yeah, Pythagorean theory, right? Do you remember what is the Pythagorean theory? Okay. Uh, if you squared uh, each legs and added, it become a squaring hypotenuse, right? In a triangle, there is two legs. One is we call call uh, a hypotenuse, right? So if you square theirs, square the hypotenuse have to be equal to uh, two legs added up, two legs square added up, right? So. Let's just say um, uh, first leg is, is A, second leg is B, and hypotenuse C, 
So a square plus b square is c square, right? So we only know that, but Pythagoras is much more than that. Um, he had his own uh, secret society. So when you become a, a, a Pythagorean philosophy, you, you have to live together. They have a, such a secret. Whatever they discuss cannot get out of that uh, society. And whoever reveal it, they kill it. <laughs> One of uh, Pythagorean uh, disciple, he revealed one thing, they, uh, you know, Pythagoreans and the others drowned in um, Mediterranean Sea and killed it. So that much secrecy was there. But I think his life was really uh, funny. He think that uh, math, uh, mathematics is a deep reality. <laughs> and uh, what he think is everything was uh, numbers. He said, uh, uh, muscular is number two. Women's are number three. So number two uh, plus number uh, uh, three become number five, meaning men married woman become a, a family number five. So woman uh, num number two, man has number two, two uh, number, uh, woman has number three number, family has a number uh, uh, five, and justice is number four. <laughs> Everything he think is numbers. And uh, his life is, uh, uh, I think, uh, I don't know, good or bad, or he's so miserable. He always think about the numbers day and night. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, uh, you know, uh, he believed that uh, uh, um, number is very important. E example is he's also um, um, he loved music. He 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 studied uh, harmony of music. Example is uh, if we have a string, if a string is longer, longer long and the short one, let's just say. Uh, Longer one has twice than shorter one. If you click the longer one, sounds like a more bass. bass, right? If you shorter one, become twice. yeah, twice much higher than the uh, longer one, right? So he studied the harmony. <laughs> he connected this harmony to the numbers too. <laughs> the problem is. Um, uh, you know, um, uh, he he had just such a secrecy that uh, you know he didn't want to reveal anything uh, from his uh, secret uh, society. That's the really problem. Anyway, while he was studying, he think that the world is not came from material, but it come from spiritual. That's the important, right? So uh, Plato later. Uh, visited him in Italy and spent uh, quite a long time, more than a year with him and uh, learn about the spiritual things from uh, 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 Pythagoras, right? Anyway, um, he said that fundamental reality of things is not material, but spiritual. So he's the first person to think that there is a spirit or spiritual things. <laughs> Anyway, um, um, but while he was studying uh, one time, uh, he found the uh, alarming number. That is, uh, uh, he found out that there is an irrational number. Do you know what is the irrational number? <laughs> there are irrational numbers. There is rational numbers. In, if you study uh, mathematics, there is, uh, Rational numbers and uh, irrational numbers. Uh, irrational numbers that um, uh, after decimal never ends, not repeats and uh, never ends. Like example is a pi. 
What is a pi? 3.14? No. 3.14567231. It, it's not repeating, but it, it goes continually, right? Pi. Or like a 2.3315. Uh, but let's just say 1.3333. If you 1.3333, if you same numbers are repeating as a decimal, we call the rational numbers, not irrational numbers. But somehow Pythagoras found these uh, irrational numbers. He realized that uh, Pythagorean theory doesn't work in irrational <laughs> three-dimensional or four-dimensional world. So he was so shocked and uh, one of his students discovered. <laughs> so they killed him. Anyway, he's uh, such a funny man. Uh, anyway, uh, uh, here, there is a geometry in the rooming of the string. There is a music in the space of the uh, spare. <laughs> he found out that Pythagoras says. Yes. Okay. Anyway, um, another thing is uh, he found the meaning of dualism. Dualism does not mean of a dual. Two, okay. Uh, dualism is in here is conflict. Conflict. So he said, um, "What is the meaning of uh, body and soul in dualism?" Meaning that uh, our physical body, our spiritual body is inside the physical body, right? So physical body and spiritual body is a dualism, meaning conflict all the time. Can you get it, that idea? Do you have a conflict in your body and the spirit? Yes, right? Yes. Paul said, I want to do the things what I want to do it, but he couldn't do it because of the body didn't do it, right? The Jesus disciples uh, in the mountain of Olives, what Jesus said when uh, he found his disciples sleeping? Spirit is willing, but body is weak, right? So uh, body and soul is always have a dualism, so much conflict. I want to do so many good things. I want to do great men. I want to study 24 hours a day, 20 hours a day, but you cannot do it because there is spirit is so willing, but the body is weak. We cannot do it. So he found that somehow, I don't know why, how, but he found this uh, body and soul dualism conflict. <laughs> He's uh, amazing, right? He also um, studied the numbers, but um, I don't know you understand uh, that is a perfect number. Do you heard about the perfect numbers in the mathematics? Uh, do you know what is the perfect numbers? Perfect numbers that the number can uh, divisible but if we add it, it becomes the same number. Okay, example is, is kind of hard, but uh, the example. Number six is perfect number. Where? Why? Because you can divide by two, you can divide by one, you can divide by two, you can divide by three, right? Yes? yes. Now, if we add it, one plus two plus three become six. That's what we call the perfect numbers. There is a perfect numbers in, in uh, series. And uh, when I study math in, uh, <laughs> in uh, uh, math, uh, I studied uh, pure math and then the, my homework was find as much uh, uh, you can, you know, these are perfect numbers. I mean, I used a uh, super uh, computer but uh, it's endless. Nobody can uh, find <laughs> the end of the perfect numbers, uh, even if you use the uh, uh, spoken uh, computer. So uh, 
the teacher asked us to make a formula for that, but we cannot make a formula because you, know, you, you cannot uh, find the end of the uh, perfect numbers, right? That's why, anyway, uh, we close to the make a formula for that, but we failed. Anyway, while he was thinking about the perfect numbers, he thought, okay, oh, the numbers are coming again, again. So he connected their, their own two incarnation. <laughs> so he's the first person who talk about the incarnation. Okay. So what is the Eastern religion that uh, says the reincarnation? Which religion talk about the incarnation? No, not Christian. Actually, Hinduism, right? Hinduism, Hinduism came, uh, of course, uh, uh, Buddhism came from Hinduism. That's why they have uh, incarnation, but it, that's a little different. Anyway, incarnation, that idea coming from uh, uh, <laughs> Pythagoras. <laughs> that's a really uh, incredible, right? He said also, you know, uh, mortality of our soul is indestructible. While he was studying numbers, he found out that it's very true, right? Is our soul is uh, destructible? Not really, right? Our soul is, uh, when we body dies, our soul go to the heaven, right? And we reach early before God. That's why it's uh, indestructible. Anyway, he, he thought so many things you know, if we talk about the Pythagoras, I think it'll take a few days to finish. Anyway, uh, later Plato, when his uh, teacher, his mentor, uh, Socrates died, he began to travel, he traveled 10 years. And finally he went to the, uh, uh, Italy and met the Pythagoras and learned about these spiritual things. And he adopted this idea and he, he was talking about the ideal, ideal world. Ideal um, is not necessarily ideal of something, but Yisang, uh, Yisang uh, Nara, Yisang uh, Gut. We'll talk about that on later. Anyway, uh, next one is uh, Italian philosopher. Next one is uh, Finefones. Uh, he's a great attacker of a Greek gods. Uh, he said uh, Greek gods are so funny, <laughs> unbelievable. How can uh, uh, you know God become uh, just like acting like a human being? You know they have a jealousy, they have a love, you know love relationship, and all those things. So he really attacked. Uh, uh, Greek uh, pantheon, um, but he's actually atheist. <laughs> he said, uh, uh, let's just say, uh, he said that there is only one God. That's wonderful. There is no such thing as many gods, you know. Um, but he, he said, uh, God created human being, but we created God, <laughs> he said. He's a really, uh, he said, we created God in our own image. Uh, and uh, he said also, if we have wings, that means God must be a, a bird. <laughs> He's a funny guy, anyway. Uh, later, a uh, German uh, philosopher, um, Bodwig, uh, take his idea and made such a crazy uh, philosophies, anyway. Uh, uh, yeah. Third one is uh, permitted is, ah, we have to know him. <laughs> okay. Um, he, he said, nothing is changed. Heraclitus says everything changed, but he said, mm, nothing is changed. He said, uh, you know, universal change must be illusion. You're, you have an uh, illusionary, 
That's why you think a change. He said there is no death, there is no birth, <laughs> nothing changes. He, he's the same uh, famous three words. Whatever is yes. <laughs> well, how can we apply this one? But actually, uh, Plato took his idea, made the ideal world. Think about in heaven. In heaven, there is no death. There is no birth. Nothing changes. So Plato take these two people, Heraclitus' idea to made world idea. He didn't say world, but um, uh, receptable, receptable. Later we'll talk about that, what it means, receptable. And he, uh, Plato also take uh, Parmenides' idea and made idea. I didn't say idea world or heaven, but he said idea. Isang, isang, isango so uh, anyway um, uh, permitted is uh, think that nothing is changed okay uh, uh, his article uh, most philosophers article is uh, uh, preserved but his article was uh, lost about uh, Aristotle's uh, anyway um, I think he had it, some uh, article of um, Panemenides and wrote uh, his work, okay? And there is two things he wrote, the way of truth and the way of seeming. Okay. Anyway, now, Parmenides' uh, uh, students named Geno always follow the Parmenides. When Parmenides talk about it in the people, nobody understood what he was talking about. Then there is Geno explain about his teacher's idea. And uh, Geno's paradoxes, uh, there are uh, three of them, the runner, and the uh, second one is uh, uh, turtles and hare, and the arrow. He, he was, ha have these three. Actually, these three things are all, almost the same. He explained why there is no such a thing as change. Changing is illusionary. There is nothing changes. The first one I want to talk about, the runner. Okay, let's just say the uh, runner, 100 meter dash runner, he have to run 100 meters, right? Okay. Who is the uh, fast uh, 100, 100 uh, dash runner now? Uh, huh? Bolt, right? Uh, how many... Uh, the second he takes, uh, his record was 9.78 something, right? I don't know. If, anyway, he, he uh, 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 won the uh, 100 million uh, less than 10 seconds. But Geno says, if you want to go 100 meters, you have to pass half, right? What is a half of 100 meters? 50. Now, if you want to go to 50, you have to pass half of 50, 25 meters, right? If you want to go to 25 meters, you have to pass half of 25 meters, 12.5, right? If you want to go to 20.5 meters, you have to pass 6.75, right? And so on. So when he tried to run, he have to pass Half of that, therefore, he never run. There is no thing as running. <laughs> that's a, that's a, a runner's uh, paradox. Arrow, you're shooting the arrow. You want to catch a bird, you, you shoot the arrow. Right. That is like uh, 20 meters. If you want to go to 20 meters, he has to pass 10 meters first before reaching the 20 meters, right? Now, if you want to go to 10 meters, he have to go through five meters to reach the 10 meter, right? If you go to five meters, you have to pass 2.5 meters, and so on, and so on. So he never shoot the arrow. 
that's a kind of a paradox. Now that is um, uh, tortoise and uh, rabbit. Okay, uh, rabbit said to uh, uh, tortoise and said, "You are very slow. Why don't you start? I will, uh, you know, uh, why don't you uh, go hundred meters old? Hundred meters start then ahead of me." Now when rabbit run, begin to run, tortoises have to run, right? Okay. And uh, even he go small, uh, the, the rabbit have to go smaller, right? Well, but in this way, this paradoxical way, rabbit never ever <laughs> Impossible to catch it. <laughs> That's what we call we call the uh, uh, paradox, right? Okay. So anyway, uh, the permitted this idea uh, later Plato took it, and in Christians we made the idea that there is a spiritual world in heaven, right? Heaven. There is nothing changes. There is no birth, no death. <laughs> and that, that idea explanation was Geno. <laughs> Geno, okay? All right. All right. Uh, uh, we, we, let's go back to uh, Italian philosophers. First one is, who was the first one? Let's, uh, Think about uh, first one is Pythagoras, right? Mm -hmm. He he is the first person who talk about spirit, spiritual world. There is a spiritual world, <laughs> huh? and uh, uh, Genophanes is a funny guy. He said uh, there is only one God. But this God is not a uh, creator God, but man-made God, right? Huh? Man-made man uh, God in, in uh, our own image, <laughs> he said. Uh, we talk about Parmenides, right? Parmenides is, what is his three famous word? Whatever it is, it is. <laughs> in other words, nothing changes. He believes nothing changes. Changing is illusionary, he said. And Geno uh, uh, is Geno is Geno is going around and try to explain his uh, teachers' idea. So he he was talking about the runner, right? And uh, anyway, uh, I will talk about this much uh, today. Uh, is anyone who are listening through uh, uh, Zoom, you can send uh, uh, type to uh, Missionary Joseph and Missionary Joseph will uh, give it uh, any question. If, if you have it, you can, uh, you can uh, write on to him. Okay? Anyway, so do you have any question? No question? Oh, the, okay, Peter's asking. Peter? Yeah, the ears are BC or AD? Oh, <laughs> of course, BC. <laughs> Everything is BC. I didn't write uh, uh, BC because it was uh, all the stories uh, BC. Okay. Yeah. But it's amazing. Um, you know, uh, sixth century of BC. I mean, beginning from 7th century BC, uh, people think about this uh, philosophy. And their idea is, what is life? You know, uh, what is the meaning of life? That's why philosophy came from. Anyway, uh, uh, these uh, philosophers, uh, you know, how to think, uh, 
and they made uh, really uh, human being um, life more advanced than before. Um, example is this. Um, Socrates later, uh, we know that uh, 399 BC, uh, Athen uh, council condemned him to death. Uh, so he drank uh, poison and died. Do you know what is uh, his uh, uh, crime? Oh, actually, they said that you poisoned the young people's mind. <laughs> that was the, his crime. But uh, his idea, you know, uh, the Greek people, when they defeated uh, Persia, wow, I mean, only 50,000 people fought against the uh, uh, half a million Persians, they fought and won. Uh, they become, you know, enormously happy. <laughs> small, small country, <laughs> Greece defeated Persia. And, uh, and their country become a, such a rich country. But, you know, uh, Athens uh, now, Spartans began to uh, jealousy about Athens and they, they uh, beat each other. They began to fight and nobody won. Actually, uh, Sparta won, but uh, because of their fighting, the Greek nation become uh, really uh, devastated. And then uh, when, uh, you know, uh, Socrates came out and said, why are you fighting for? Why are you killing each other? Why don't you have reason? Why don't you talk? At the time, uh, you know, in, in people's idea is they have to be hero. How can you be a hero? By uh, be a good soldier to kill well, right? But he said, why are you fighting? Just talk. And uh, Athens, um, Council think that he's, what are you talking about? Talking? <laughs> you know, it's not time to fighting, but you're talking. Mm -hmm. So they say you're so poisoning the young people. You know, you, uh, that's why they uh, ask him to drink the poison and die. Now, philosophy is like that. Um, make us think, make us talk instead of uh, try to find. Koreans are, uh, we say hot tempo, right? Do you know why <laughs> I, I said hot tempo? Why uh, Koreans are hot tempo? Because um, I think school system, they never teach us how to talk or how to reason. <laughs> so instead of talking, <laughs> anger come out. <laughs> instead of, uh, you know, smile and talking, <laughs> the, the fist come out and fight. <laughs> That's the reason I think. <laughs> so anyway, and my point is that philosophy is really good because you can make you think and you can have a reason. Whether you believe or not, God himself says to his people, Israel, when they committed so much sin in Isaiah chapter one, I think verse uh, 13 or 14, he says, uh, your sins are uh, uh, edge, uh, red as a crimson, but let's read it together. God himself wants to reason with the human being, simple human being. So we, as your children of God, have to learn from God and know how to reason with others. That's why we need the philosophies. <laughs> anyway. If we don't have any uh, question, I, I want to finish. Let me pray and finish, okay? <laughs> Heavenly Father, we uh, learned uh, this philosophy uh, because we want to apply in our life so that we can reason with the young people uh, and understand uh, uh, 
them deeply. Uh, bless our prayers for uh, upcoming Christmas worship service. And raise uh, missionary uh, shepherd uh, David Gage as a wonderful messenger. And prepare for 2020. Thank you for this time. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you.